Friedrich Wilhelm Christian Karl Ferdinand von Humboldt, German, Wilhelm F. N. H. Bolt, the 22nd of June 1767 to the 8th of April 1835, was a Prussian philosopher, linguist, government functionary, diplomat, and founder of the Humboldt University of Berlin, which was named after him in 1949, and also after his younger brother, Alexander von Humboldt, a naturalist. He is especially remembered as a linguist who made important contributions to the philosophy of language, ethnolinguistics and to the theory and practice of education. In particular, he is widely recognized as having been the architect of the Humboldtian education ideal, which was used from the beginning in Prussia as a model for its system of education and eventually in countries such as the US and Japan. His younger brother, Alexander von Humboldt, was famous as a geographer, naturalist, and explorer. Topic. Biography Humboldt was born in Potsdam, Margraviate of Brandenburg, and died in Tegel, province of Brandenburg. In June 1791, he married Caroline von Dascheroden. They had eight children, of whom five one of them Gabriele von Humboldt survived to adulthood. Topic. Philosopher Humboldt was a philosopher, he wrote The Limits of State Action in 1791-1792 though it was not published until 1850, after Humboldt's death, one of the boldest defenses of the liberties of the Enlightenment. It influenced John Stuart Mill's essay on liberty through which von Humboldt's ideas became known in the English-speaking world. Humboldt outlined an early version of what Mill would later call the harm principle. His house in Rome became a cultural hub, run by Caroline von Humboldt. The section dealing with education was published in the December 1792 issue of the Berlinische Mondschrift under the title, On Public State Education. With this publication, Humboldt took part in the philosophical debate regarding the direction of national education that was in progress in Germany, as elsewhere, after the French Revolution. <laughs> <laughs> Educational reforms Humboldt had been home-schooled and never finished his comparably short university studies at the universities of Frankfurt Oder and Göttingen. Nevertheless, he became one of the most influential officials in German education. Actually, Humboldt had intended to become Minister of Education, but failed to attain that position. The Prussian king asked him to leave Rome in 1809 and to lead the Directorate of Education under Friedrich Ferdinand Alexander zu Donna Schlabitten. Humboldt did not reply to the appointment for several weeks and would have preferred to stay on at the embassy in Rome. His wife did not return with him to Prussia. The couple met again when Humboldt stepped down from the educational post and was appointed head of the embassy in Vienna. Humboldt installed a standardized system of public instruction, from basic schools till secondary education, and founded Berlin University. He imposed a standardization of state examinations and inspections and created a special department within the ministry to oversee and design curricula, textbooks, and learning aids. Humboldt's plans for reforming the Prussian school system were not published until long after his death, together with his fragment of a treatise on the theory of human education, which he had written in about 1793. Here, Humboldt states that the ultimate task of our existence is to give the fullest possible content to the concept of humanity in our own person, through the impact of actions in our own lives. This task can only be implemented through the links established between ourselves as individuals and the world around us. G.S. I. P. 283. Humboldt's concept of education does not lend itself solely to individualistic interpretation. It is true that he always recognized the importance of the organization of individual life and the development of a wealth of individual forms GS3, P, 358, but he stressed the fact that self-education can only be continued, in the wider context of development of the world GS, 7, P, 33. In other words, the individual is not only entitled, but also obliged, to play his part in shaping the world around him. Humboldt's educational ideal was entirely colored by social considerations. He never believed that the human race could culminate in the attainment of a general perfection conceived in abstract terms. In 1789, he wrote in his diary that the education of the individual requires his incorporation into society and involves his links with society at large. G.S. 14, p. 155. 
In his essay on the theory of human education, he answered the question as to the demands which must be made of a nation, of an age and of the human race. Education, truth and virtue must be disseminated to such an extent that the concept of mankind takes on a great and dignified form in each individual GS, I, P, 284. However, this shall be achieved personally by each individual, who must absorb the great mass of material offered to him by the world around him and by his inner existence, using all the possibilities of his receptiveness. He must then reshape that material with all the energies of his own activity and appropriate it to himself so as to create an interaction between his own personality and nature in a most general, active and harmonious form. GS 2 p 117. Humboldt educational model goes beyond vocational training. In a letter to the Prussian king, he wrote, "...there are undeniably certain kinds of knowledge that must be of a general nature and, more importantly, a certain cultivation of the mind and character that nobody can afford to be without. People obviously cannot be good craftworkers, merchants, soldiers or businessmen unless, regardless of their occupation, they are good, upstanding and, according to their condition, well-informed human beings and citizens." If this basis is laid through schooling, vocational skills are easily acquired later on, and a person is always free to move from one occupation to another, as so often happens in life." The philosopher Julian Nida Rummelin criticized discrepancies between Humboldt's ideals and the contemporary European education policy, which narrowly understands education as a preparation for the labor market, and argued that we need to decide between McKinsey and Humboldt. Diplomat As a successful diplomat between 1802 and 1819, Humboldt was plenipotentiary Prussian minister at Rome from 1802, ambassador at Vienna from 1812 during the closing struggles of the Napoleonic Wars, at the Congress of Prague 1813, where he was instrumental in drawing Austria to ally with Prussia and Russia against France, a signer of the peace treaty at Paris and the treaty between Prussia and defeated Saxony 1815, at Frankfurt settling post-Napoleonic Germany, and at the Congress at Aachen in 1818. However, the increasingly reactionary policy of the Prussian government made him give up political life in 1819, and from that time forward he devoted himself solely to literature and study. <laughs> <laughs> Linguist Wilhelm von Humboldt was an adept linguist and studied the Basque language. He translated Pindar and Aeschylus into German. Humboldt's work as a philologist in Basque has had more extensive impact than his other work. His visit to the Basque country resulted in researches into the early inhabitants of Spain by the help of the Basque language 1821. In this work, Humboldt endeavored to show by examining geographical placenames that at one time a race or races speaking dialects allied to modern Basque extended throughout Spain, southern France and the Balearic Islands. He identified these people with the Iberians of classical writers, and further surmised that they had been allied with the Berbers of northern Africa. Humboldt's pioneering work has been superseded in its details by modern linguistics and archaeology, but is sometimes still uncritically followed even today. He was elected a member of the American Antiquarian Society in 1820, and a foreign honorary member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences in 1822. Humboldt died while preparing his greatest work, on the ancient Kawi language of Java, but its introduction was published in 1836 as the heterogeneity of language and its influence on the intellectual development of mankind. His essay on the philosophy of speech, first clearly laid down that the character and structure of a language expresses the inner life and knowledge of its speakers, and that languages must differ from one another in the same way and to the same degree as those who use them. Sounds do not become words until a meaning has been put into them, and this meaning embodies the thought of a community. What Humboldt terms the inner form of a language is just that mode of denoting the relations between the parts of a sentence which reflects the manner in which a particular body of men regards the world about them. It is the task of the morphology of speech to distinguish the various ways in which languages differ from each other as regards their inner form, and to classify and arrange them accordingly. He is credited with being the first European linguist to identify human language as a rule-governed system, rather than just a collection of words and phrases paired with meanings. This idea is one of the foundations of Noam Chomsky's theory of language. 
Chomsky frequently quotes Humboldt's description of language as a system which makes infinite use of finite means, meaning that an infinite number of sentences can be created using a finite number of grammatical rules. Humboldt scholar Tilman Borsch, however, notes profound differences between von Humboldt's view of language and Chomsky's. More recently, Humboldt has also been credited as an originator of the linguistic relativity hypothesis, more commonly known as the Sapper Whorf hypothesis, developed by linguists Edward Sapper or Benjamin Whorf a century later. The reception of Humboldt's work remains problematic in English speaking countries, despite the work of Langham Brown, Manchester, and James W. Underhill. Humboldt, Worldview and Language, 2009, on account of his concept of what he called Weltansik, the linguistic worldview, with Weltanschauung being translated simply as worldview, a term associated with ideologies and cultural mindsets in both German and English. The centrality of distinction in understanding Humboldt's work was set out by one of the leading contemporary German Humboldt scholars, Jürgen Trabant, in his works in both German and French. Polish linguists at the Lublin School see Jerzy Bartminski, in their research of Humboldt, also stress this distinction between the worldviews of a personal or political kind and the worldview that is implicit in language as a conceptual system. However, little rigorous research in English has gone into exploring the relationship between the linguistic worldview and the transformation and maintenance of this worldview by individual speakers. One notable exception is the work of Underhill, who explores comparative linguistic studies in both Creating Worldviews, Language, Ideology and Metaphor 2011 and in Ethnolinguistics and Cultural Concepts, Truth, Love, Hate and War 2012. In Underhill's work, a distinction is made between five forms of worldview, world perceiving, world conceiving, cultural mindset, personal world and perspective, in order to convey the distinctions Humboldt was concerned with preserving in his ethnolinguistics. Probably the best known linguist working with a truly Humboldtian perspective writing in English today is Anna Verbitska, who has published a number of comparative works on semantic universals and conceptual distinctions in language. The Rouen Ethnolinguistics Project, in France, published online a seven-hour series of lectures on Humboldt's thought on language, with the Berlin specialist professor. Trabant, in Charles Taylor's important summative work, The Language Animal, The Full Shape of the Human Linguistic Capacity, Taylor, 2016 von Humboldt is given credit, along with Johann Georg Hamann and Johann Gottfried Herder, for inspiring Taylor's HHH approach to the philosophy of language, emphasizing the creative power and cultural specificity of language. Topic Bibliography Socrates and Plato on the Divine Ridge. Socrates und Platten über die Gottheit, 1787-1790 Humboldt. On the Limits of State Action, first seen in 1792. Idin zu einem Versuch, die Grenzen der Wirksamkeit des Staats zu Bestimmen, p.e. Published by E. Trewent, 1851 German über den Geschlechtsunterschied, 1794 über Mannlich und Weibliche Form, 1795 Outline of a Comparative Anthropology Ridge. Plan einer vergleichenden Anthropologie, 1797. The Eighteenth Century Arridge. Das Akzente Jarundert, equals 1797. Asthetische Versich i über Goths Hermann und Dorothea, 1799. Latium und Hellas, 1806 Geschichte des Verfalls und Untergangs der Griechischen Freestaten, 1807-1808. Pindars Olympische Oden. Translation from Greek, 1816. Aishelos Agamemnon. Translation from Greek, 1816. Über das Vergleichen Sprechstudium in Besiehung auf die verschiedenen Epochen der Sprechentwicklung, 1820. Über die Aufgabe des Geschichtsschreibers, 1821. Researches into the early inhabitants of Spain with the help of the Basque language Arridge. Prüfung der Untersuchungen über die Erbewohner Hispaniens vermittelst der Vaskischen Sprache, 1821. Über die Entstehung der Grammatischen Formen und ihren Einfluss auf die Eidenentwicklung, 1822. Upon writing and its relation to speech Arridge. Über die Buchstabenschrift und ihren Zusammenhang mit dem Sprechbau, 1824. Notice sur la grammaire japonaise du P.O. 1826. read online. Über die unter dem Namen Bhagavad Gita Bekante Episode des Mahabharata, 1826. Uber den Dualis, 1827. On the Languages of the South Seas Arridge. Uber die Sprache der Sudsienzalen, 1828. On Schiller and the Path of Spiritual Development Arridge. Uber Schiller und den Gang seiner Geistesentwicklung, 1830.
Resention von Goethe's Zweitem Ramischem Aufenthalt, 1830. The Heterogeneity of Language and Its Influence on the Intellectual Development of Mankind Arige. Über die Verschiedenheit des menschlichen Sprechbaus und ihren Einfluss auf die geistigen Twicklung des Menschengeschlechts, 1836. New edition, On Language. On the Diversity of Human Language Construction and Its Influence on the Mental Development of the Human Species, Cambridge University Press, 2nd Rev., edition 1999 Topic Collected writings Humboldt, Wilhelm von Gesemelt Schriften, Ausgabe der Prussischen Akademie der Wissenschaften. Vols. I, 17, Berlin 1903 36. Cited as GS, the Roman numeral indicates the volume and the Arabic figure the page. The original German spelling has been modernized. Topic. See also Liberalism, Contributions to liberal theory, Ferdinand de Saussure Topic. Notes Topic. Further reading Azurmendi, Jocks. Humboldt. Hiskunsa Eta Pensamendua, Bilbo, UEU, 2007. ISBN 978-84-8438-099-3, asterisk Forster, Michael N. German Philosophy of Language, From Schlegel to Hegel and Beyond, Oxford, Oxford University Press, 2011. ISBN 978-0-19-960481-4. Azurmendi, Jocks, Ein Denkmal der Tung und Lieb. Humboldt über die Baskische Landschaft, RIEV, 48-1, 125-42, Usko Ikaskunsa, 2003 ISSN 0212-7016 Berman, Antoine. L'Épreuve de la Tranger. Culture et Traduction dans l'Illemagne Romantique, Herder, Goethe, Schlegel, Novalis, Humboldt, Schleiermacher, Holderlin, Paris, Gallimard, Essays, 1984. ISBN 978-2-07-070076-9. Borsch, Tillman. Wilhelm von Humboldt, München, Beck, 1990. ISBN 3-406-33218-8. Dorig, Detmar, 2008. Humboldt, Wilhelm von, 1767-1835. In Hamowy, Ronald. The Encyclopedia of Libertarianism. Thousand Oaks, C.A., Sage, Cato Institute. pp. 229-30. doi, 10.4135, 9781412965900.2008.0001. ISBN 978-1-4129-6580-4. LCCN 2008009151. OCLC 750831024. Goritzaitgi, Inyaki Zabalita. W. Von Humboldt's Forschungen über die Baskische Nation und Sprache und Ihre Bedutung für Seine Anthropology. Köln, 1998. Dissertation. Hegel, G. W. F., 1827. On the episode of the Mahabharata known by the name Bhagavad Gita Hegel's review of Wilhelm von Humboldt's lectures on the Bhagavad Gita. Lalata Kosturbosa, Marina. Ragioni e tradizioni, il pensiero giuridico ed etico politico di Wilhelm von Humboldt, Milano, Giuffre, 2000. ISBN, 88-14-08219-7. Mara, Rilino. La ragioni e il caso. Il processo costituent nel realismo storico di Wilhelm von Humboldt, materiali per una storia della cultura juridica, XXXII 2, 2002, pp. 453-64. Mitzella, Koldo. G. de Humboldt et la Longue Basque. In, Lengua e Historia. Madrid, Perininfo, 1985. ISBN 84-283-1379-2. Roberts, John. German Liberalism and Wilhelm von Humboldt, A Reassessment, Mosaic Press, 2002 Schultheis, Franz. Le Couchmar de Humboldt, Les Reformes de l'Ensonnement Super Europen, Paris, Raisins Dagger Editions, 2008. ISBN 978-2-912107-40-4. Sorkin, David. 
Wilhelm von Humboldt, The Theory and Practice of Self-Formation Building, 1791–1810", in, Journal of the History of Ideas, Vol. 44, No. 1 Jan. Mar, 1983, pp. 55–73. Trabant, Jürgen, Humboldt au la sens du language, Mardega, 1995, asterisk stub, Elsina. Wilhelm von Humboldt's philosophy of language, its sources and influence, Edwin Mellon Press, 2002. Trabant, Jürgen, Sprechsinn, la sens du language, de la linguistique et de la philosophie du language in la pensée dans la langue. Humboldt et après, PUV, 1995. Trabant, Jürgen, du génie aux genes des langues in et le génie des langues? Essays et Savoies PUV, 2000 Trabant, Jürgen, Traditions de Humboldt, Editions de la Maison des Sciences de l'Homme, Paris, 1999. Trabant, Jürgen, Quand l'Europe oblige Herder, Humboldt et les langues, Revue Germanique Internationale, 2003, 20, 153-65 Mise à jour Avril 2005. Underhill, James W. Humboldt, Worldview and Language, Edinburgh, Edinburgh University Press, 2009. Underhill, James W. Ethnolinguistics and Cultural Concepts, Truth, Love, Hate and War, Cambridge, Cambridge University Press, 2012. Valentin, Jean Marie. Alexander von Humboldt, 150e Anniversary de sa mort, Paris, Didier Erudition, 2011. ISBN 978-2-252-03756-0. External links Lives of the Brothers Humboldt, an extensive biography available from the Million Book Project Mueller Vollmer, Kurt. Wilhelm von Humboldt. In Zalta, Edward N. Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. Humboldt University Site, Brief Eulogy Wilhelm V. Humboldt – Brief Information Page from the Acton Institute Works by Wilhelm von Humboldt at Project Gutenberg Works by or about Wilhelm von Humboldt at Internet Archive Works by Wilhelm von Humboldt at LibriVox Public Domain Audiobooks in German Works by Wilhelm von Humboldt – Partial List from Zeno.org The German Classics of the 19th and 20th Centuries Two Sections by Humboldt Wilhelm von Humboldt – The Sphere and Duties of Government – Passages 1792 – Thinking Language – Wilhelm von Humboldt now event videos, conference papers recorded at Queen Mary University of London, April 2016, organizer Marco Pajovic. Papers on Humboldt's Thinking Language by Marco Pajovic, John Joseph, Jürgen Trabant, Ute Tintman, Barbara Kassin presented by David Noel Smith, James W. Underhill, John Walker.